Hello everyone and welcome to today's video in which I'm going to give you a tour through Tenerife. I will show you the most symbolic places here on the island. I will also take you to the north because I feel like a lot of people always underestimate the north and goes straight towards the south to spend their holidays only there in one of the five-star resorts. So this video is going to be about the most beautiful locations here on the island of Tenerife. I will show you 10 places that you must put on your list if you are visiting this island. Let's start. We are going to start today's video here in the capital of Tenerife, which is Santa Cruz. I am currently in front of the auditorium of Santa Cruz, which is where you can enjoy some concerts of the Tenerife Symphony Orchestra. Also, since Santa Cruz doesn't have its own beach directly in the center of the city. You can enjoy those swimming pools that are here behind me. There is a whole water park where you can easily spend the day and enjoy some sun and the swimming pools. Santa Cruz is definitely worth a visit, not only because it is the capital of Tenerife, but also because here you can find beautiful commercial areas where you can do a lot of shopping and also beautiful parks that are perfect for a little stroll in the afternoon such as this park here behind me, which is the Park Garcia Sanabria. In this park, you can find the clock of flowers that you can see here behind me. Another place that you have to put on your list if you are on Tenerife is this beach here behind me. This is the beach Las Teresitas and it is the closest beach to the capital Santa Cruz. It is a huge and wide and super long beach with golden sand. Actually this beach is artificial. Since Tenerife is a volcanic island the natural beaches come with black sand. This one here has golden sand and the sand has been imported from the Sahara. It is a calm beach also popular for families and you can easily enjoy a whole beach day on a super wide beach with a beach bar and of course also some sunbeds. On the other side of Playa Las Teresitas we can see another one which is a natural beach typical for Canary Islands with black sand. It's a nudist beach so we cannot get any closer. When coming to Tenerife, do not ignore the north. I recommend you to definitely rent a car and explore the north a little bit. This place here is called Pico de Ingles and it is a stunning landscape. The road up here was absolutely beautiful. There are a lot of hikings that you can do here in this area and it is a very unique and green landscape that you can find here in this area. Another reason to go up the Pico de Ingles is this stunning viewpoint. You get a view all over the valley, which is super impressive. And on a not so cloudy day, you would even see the Teide here in the background. And we can even see Santa Cruz from here, which is down there on the sea. Very close to the Pico de Ingles is the Path of Senses. That one is a hike where you can find three different levels of difficulty. The hardest one would take you around one and a half hour and it's a circular route. And then depending on your fitness level, you can take either the first path that will take you around 20 minutes or the second one that will take more or less 45 minutes. This area here is famous for its beautiful nature. There are some viewpoints in the area and you can enjoy a nice little hike here. The Pass of Senses got its name because it is considered as a hike where you can use all of your senses, where you can enjoy the nature to its fullest, not only with your eyes, with your vision, but also with the smell, your hearing and by touching nature. We are now in Puerto de la Cruz, which used to be the old harbor of La Orotava. It has also been one of the first touristic places here on Tenerife because the British recommended it as the perfect place for vacation. Here in Puerto de la Cruz, there's also a beach, which is perfect for surfers, by the way. And it is a black sanded beach that is natural here for Tenerife. 
Normally, since it's a volcanic island, the beaches here are naturally black, with black sand. The beaches that don't have black sand are not natural. Actually, at some places they import sand from the Sahara, but this is what it usually looks like. And it's actually quite beautiful. Right now it's in the afternoon, so you don't see it anymore, but once the sun is shining on the sand, it's like sparkling and pretty. Puerto de la Cruz is also famous for its beautiful beach promenade where you can take a long walk. There are lots of shops and bars and restaurants here. And usually this area here behind me would be open and you can take a sunbath here. I'm not sure if it's closed now because it's winter or because it's already late in the afternoon. Not sure about that. But anyway, it's super beautiful and it's super nice to take a long walk here. Just look at this beautiful sunset here. Honestly, for me, this is so far the most beautiful town that I've seen here on Tenerife. And it's definitely the place that I'm going to move to if I'm ever going to move to Tenerife. That decision has been taken already. It has everything you need. It has a nice beach. You can surf here, which is one of my favorite things to do. It has a really nice beach promenade. It has nice bars and, and restaurants. It is touristic, but not too touristic. And it's also not too small. Decision is taken. I'm moving. Not just kidding. Someday maybe. One place that I need to mention at this point and that is a must visit for our surfers is El Medano. It is a beautiful coastal town in the south of Tenerife and it is quite a touristic place. It has perfect weather conditions all year round for kite surfers and wind surfers due to a constantly strong wind. Therefore, it is the perfect place for all surfers. Our next stop is also in the north of Tenerife. This is Bajamar and it is famous for those swimming pools that you can see here in the background. Bahama in general is a very nice coastal town and it comes with those natural pools that are actually free to use. There are people taking a bath in there right now. You can see that there has been built a little wall and there are waves crashing from the ocean into the pools. So careful there because depending on the current the waves are sometimes super high and crash straight into the pools. Besides the pools, there is also a lighthouse here. Sometimes you can see the waves crashing in so strong that this whole square that you can see around the lighthouse is full of water. It is a super impressive natural spectacle that you can see here. I just arrived at our next stop. This is also a place you must put on your list if you are coming here to Tenerife. It's called Los Gigantes. Los Gigantes are the rock formations that you can see here behind me. It's an impressive, huge wall and also a really nice village that you can see below there. From that village, you can take a boat tour in this area here. If you get lucky, you can see dolphins and even whales, even orcas at some times. And from here, you can also have a beautiful view all over the island La Gomera. The first inhabitants of Tenerife believed that in the far west of the island was the end of the world. Today, this place is known as Los Gigantes. They believed that the straight walls of Los Gigantes were the end of our planet. Our next stop is the village of Garachico, which you can see here behind me. It is one of the most touristic places here in Tenerife, but it is definitely worth to come here because it is also meant to be one of the most beautiful villages of Spain. Let's take a closer look at what it looks like. Here behind me you can now see some natural pools that are formed naturally into the rock formations and the water comes in by the ways from the ocean. These rock formations here are actually black because they come from volcanic eruption. In 1706, there was a huge volcanic eruption that basically destroyed the whole village. It has caused a lot of people here to leave their homes and to look for a better future in America, mostly in Venezuela. So these natural pools are a beautiful image today, but they come with a very sad history. 
In order to remember the huge immigration of Guarachico, they have built this monument here to honor all the emigrants. Before the volcanic eruption, Guarachico was one of the most important villages of Tenerife. It was a strategic spot in the daily comings and goings of seamen traveling between the New World and Europe. It's time to drive up to the most spectacular place of Tenerife. One thing you definitely cannot miss out on here on Tenerife is the Teide National Park. Here behind me you can see the highest peak of Spain, which is the Teide, the volcano here of Tenerife. And there are a lot of routes for hiking in this national park. It is pretty cold, so make sure to bring a jacket with you because right now we have five degrees only. We are super high. The weather here is unpredictable. It can also snow up here in the months of January and February. So make sure to keep that in mind. Bring your clothes and come prepared. Here behind me, you can now see the cable car that will take you all the way up to the peak of the Teide, which is more than 3,700 meters high. A one-way ticket would cost you 22 euros, or if you want to go up and down, it'll cost you 40 euros in total. You can also hike all the way up or hike down again if you want to enjoy a little bit the views. I am not going all the way up today because we still have a lot of things to do for today and the views are already quite impressive from here. Here behind me you can now see a rock formation that they also call the Thumb of God. I would say that is a sign for you to hit the like button, give me a thumbs up to support my work. These rock formations here behind me are constantly worn away by erosion, meaning that at some point the base of the thumb of God will be so small that it is possible that the thumb is actually going to fall. So make sure to come here soon so that you can witness the thumb of God personally. Otherwise, you will also have the chance to find some old builds of Spain where you can actually see the thumb of God as well. As mentioned before, here in the National Park of the Teide, you can do a lot of hikes. And here at the area of the Thumb of God, you can do a circular route that will take around 40 minutes. If you do the circular route, you can enjoy a lot of beautiful and stunning landscapes with amazing views of the Teide. During the months January and February, if you get lucky, the Teide might be covered in snow, which looks super beautiful. This whole area here is sometimes completely covered in snow. I've only seen this on photos. It looks super impressive and beautiful. So if you come here during the months January and February, make sure to check that park out as well. This whole mountain range here behind me is called Las Calderas de Cañadas. This area used to be a volcano until about 170,000 years ago when a huge landslide destroyed the area and produced these unique rock formations that we can see here today. That peak over there, for example, is called La Catedral because it has the shape of a cathedral. The hike itself is really not that hard. It is a little bit steep at some parts, but I would say it's definitely easy and manageable for anybody. I have seen quite a lot of videos and photos of the Teide before, and I must admit I am positively surprised. It is way more impressive in reality than on photos or videos. So far, it is exceeding my expectations. It's a stunning and very unique landscape, and you definitely have to put it on your list. If you are in Tenerife, you cannot leave Tenerife without coming to the Teide National Park. Now, I hope you enjoyed this tour through Tenerife. I hope you got some ideas of places you want to visit during your trip to the island. Make sure to rent a car for at least a couple of days to see the most epic places here on the island. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel because there will be more videos here about Tenerife. And there's one place that I didn't mention in this video, which is the biggest water park of Europe. I'm going to take you there on the next video. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss out on that one. It's one of the most epic adventures during my stay here on Tenerife. So I hope to see you in that one.